Hello mga kasubs and welcome to the Sorcicles TV. My name is Mark and for tonight we will be listening and reacting to uh, Johnny Holiday and the song entitled uh, Derriere L'Amour uh, in translated translated as Behind Love. Der, Derriere. Oh, let me know if I mispronounced. Sorry if I did. Uh, recommended by Jolly. Jolly? No, sorry. sorry. Johnny Holiday in edits. Thank you for this recommendation. Also, Thank you to all our viewers and subscribers for your continuous support to our channel. I love the uh, inter uh, interaction, you know, leaving comments. I try my best to uh, respond to all of them. But, you know, apologies if I, I'm able to only leave a heart. But bottom line is I do read your um, comments and I do my best to make sure that I get your um, recommendations. So please keep them um, flowing. To our dear members and subscribers, maraming salamat sa extra line na pinapakita ninyo, yung blessings na sinshare ninyo, sana bumalik din sa inyo tenfold. And finally, do check out our two other channels, Potion Helio and uh, Catherine Daily Vlog. And without any uh, further delays, let us give this song a go in 3, 2, 1. Derrière l'amour, il y a toute une chaîne de pourquoi. Question que l'on se pose. Il y a des tas de choses. Les fleurs qu'on garde sur le cœur et les regrets et les rancœurs, les souvenirs éblouissants et les visions de néant. Donne-moi, donne-moi ton cœur pour y vivre et pour y mourir. Derrière ton amour, qu'est-ce qu'il y a Qui est cette femme auprès de moi Quand tu me dis je t'aime Est-ce bien moi que tu aimes Est-ce que tu me fais l'amour Est-ce que tu fais vraiment l'amour Derrière ces grands rideaux noirs Tu m'interdis d'aller voir Donne-moi, donne-moi ton cœur Pour y vivre et pour y mourir J'ai besoin de tes mains sur moi Et de ton souffle et de ta voix De tes joies, de tes plaintes De tes cris, de tes craintes 
пришла, твоя пришла, любили твоя. And that is the end of the uh, song. So this was in 1998, Stayed the Friends. Uh, 1998, where was I? Hmm. Studying. <laughs> Not cutting classes. <laughs> Studying. <laughs> The, uh, so the song started with a nice uh, keyboard intro, uh, which is very, um, I'd, I'd say, synonymous to the 90s, uh, especially, you know, those with uh, um, that boy band-ish uh, kind of intro. When I heard the intro, it reminded me of, um, I don't know, I forgot about the band. Uh, I forgot if it's West, West, I don't know, Westlife or Boyzone or A1. Uh, but let me know in the comments. But when I heard the intro, it reminded me of the chorus. Cause I want it all or nothing at all. Yeah. I forgot the band. Back then, I was more of a, uh, you know, um, I listened to more of uh, 90s uh, alternative. You know, Gin Blossoms, uh, Dishwala. Uh, who else? Live. Uh... STP, Collective Soul, Red Hot, yeah, those those bands, those were my go-to uh, music, and also yeah, uh, of course Sepultura, uh, love that band. So anyway, so the, the so the night the the intro has that uh, keyboard keyboard boy band ish um, in keyboard intro. In terms of um, Johnny's singing style, what I like about this part is. Uh, because it doesn't have closed caption, and I, I, I do remember reacting to this already, but not in this particular concert. I would describe his sing the, the, the way he delivered his song here as if, you know, there is some sadness in his voice. But, you know, when you are sad about something that uh, sometimes you are, uh, you have your, your, uh, the tension on your throat will, will show that you're, it's like you're about to cry or something or break down. But him, you can feel the sadness, but you can still feel his composure in um, in singing this um, song also he there were there are parts where he was like um, some sort of like doing some sort of speech or in a uh, he's delivering it in a conversational way that gave me the impression like when when he when as he sings this song he's telling his story or um, sharing his experience with us about love, which is why uh, there was a poor moment in this during um, while listening to this video where I'm I'm actually thinking about the translation if it's correct whether it is if it's really about behind love or uh, beyond love. But uh, anyway, um, just judging from the way he sang the song, you know the sad part about it, the sad style of um, the delivery. Um, I think the song talks about um, you know the things, the uh, the challenges, the obstacles um, to keep or to retain or maybe to to earn or to receive love, something like that. Let me know in the comments. Other stuff I like about the the video, concert-wise, you can see how massive the the stage is, and then the the background, um, the the display, purple lights. Uh, you can just see how you know production wise how how massive this uh how epic this um concert is i wonder wh what is the uh, intro song uh i don't remember if i have reacted to the intro so the you know the opening song of this particular concert i may have uh, i may have not but uh, one thing i look forward to when it's a uh, johnny Halliday uh, recommendation is i always uh have that um you know, hope that or curiosity whether this would be uh, the re recommended song that I'll be listening listening to is the opening opening uh, uh, opening act or opening song because 
um, Johnny Holiday has a thing for uh, has a thing for opening um, performances. And personally, I think um, if there's one artist who has consistently have um, you know an epic entrance and uh, or, or epic opening song, I'd say. I'd say from my, you know, from my years of listening, watching concerts, I'd say it's it would be uh, Johnny, very uh, creative, um, very exciting. Uh, he just keeps you guessing. So yeah, so let's continue. Guitar. So so usually stra- the the reason why I'm I'm highlighting this is because usually that the the guitar. Uh, that's being used, which is the uh, what I believe is a Stratocaster, usually has a bright characteristic, uh, as in you know very thin, very uh, high toned sound. Uh, that is uh, what is usually um, synonymous or known for. Here, it's more on the uh, warmer side, especially where when when the guitar guitarist used that nice slide bar, you know. It's very cool and uh, very cool sounding, very warm sounding, which is and it, it's just interesting to see the uh, choice of guitar because usually other guitarists would prefer, you know, those guitars that have um, uh, or guitars that are known for or known to have, you know, fatter, fatter sound. So I, I guess it's an interesting choice, but he was able to pull it off in a nice uh, way. So good job on that. Uh, what I'm not certain is the, uh, or I didn't took notice about the uh, the pickup configuration because I, because pickups have a big say as well to your to, to your tone aside from the wood, uh, the construction of the uh, guitar. Um, traditionally, a Stratocaster has three um, single coil or you know those single or thin pickups, one next to the bridge, one near the neck, and then one in the middle. But there are some that came out, so I'm not sure if it's still the, the Fender brand. They do have a uh, different pickup configuration. Maybe uh, this one had that, so that's why it had that different um, tone characteristics. Anyway, we move forward. One thing, uh, I think this is the last part I, I took notice of, the drums. Uh, in terms of the drum sound, very um, crisp. So w- when I say uh, crisp, um it is it has less for me it has less reverb so and then more on the actual sound when you strike it like dug, 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 rather than the that reverberation if, uh, um, effect like, like dug, dug, you know having that um uh, h- how do I describe it um h- rather than the uh, sound uh, you know propagating uh, with some, you know, with some minor, is that decay you describe it, you know, s- slightly uh, fading. It's just a solid like tick, tick, tick. So very crisp um, sound. Um, cymbals, very, uh, one of the classic uh, makers back then when I was, uh, and when I was in the band, uh, there were only three, I, if I remember correctly, only three popular brands back then here in, in the Philippines. Actually, there are four. So one, we, uh, I would call the Localoid. Uh, you know, those generic, um, out-of-the-box, free, like more of a freebie uh, symbol. Very thin. Uh, thin in such a way that you can, probably it's gonna tear after one song. Uh, if you play a, a rock, you know, you know those standard rock songs. And then there were the, uh, you know, the... Um, Add-on or you buy symbols that you buy separately. So there's Sabian, Sidaljan, and then there's Paiste or Paste. I forgot how to pronounce this one. But when I was younger, or to this day, I uh, if I if I forgot or if I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, I would say Paste. Yeah, that would be the safest. Uh, anyway, let me know in the comments how how, how do we pronounce again that uh, that symbol brand. Uh, for now, that will be my reaction. Let me know what, what you think. Leave it in the comments. And if you haven't done it yet, these are the stuff you can do to show love to our channel. Please do as many as you can. Don't forget to tell your family and friends about the Sarsicles TV. Sharing is caring. And most importantly, stay safe, everyone. I'll see you on the next video.